Welcome to our program, The China Briefing. Today, we're diving into some fascinating stories from around the globe. First up, the tech titans Huawei and Tencent are in a heated dispute, as multiple Tencent video games have vanished from Huawei's App Store rankings. This ongoing rift underscores the tension between these Shenzhen based giants, with potential implications for the future of mobile gaming in China. Next, we turn to the Himalayas, where India has unveiled its first domestically produced light tank, Zora War. Designed for the challenging terrains of the disputed border with China, this new military asset is a direct response to the deadly 2020 clashes. With plans for a fleet of over 350 tanks, Zora War is set to bolster India's defence capabilities by 2027. Lastly, a concerning environmental issue from down under, methane, a greenhouse gas 80 times more harmful than CO2, is leaking from an abandoned coal mine in Sydney's Darawal National Park. Despite the mine being inactive for 30 years, the emissions continue, highlighting the long-term environmental impact of such sites. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these stories. South China Morning Post. The rivalry between Shenzhen tech giants Huawei and Tencent has intensified as Tencent's video games have vanished from Huawei's App Store rankings. This move follows Tencent's earlier removal of its hit game DNF Mobile from Huawei's store, citing expired contracts with Chinese Android vendors. Despite Tencent games still being available via search, this development marks a continuation of their long-standing dispute, which first became public in January 2021 when Huawei briefly removed Tencent's games. As Huawei's Harmony OS evolves, potentially ending support for Android apps, the two companies may need to renegotiate their terms, further complicating their relationship. South China Morning Post. In the wake of a massive Microsoft Windows outage caused by a faulty update from CrowdStrike, Chinese cybersecurity firms are seizing the opportunity to promote their own software. Companies like 360 Security Technology and QAX have highlighted the reliability and stability of their products, as Beijing aims to reduce dependence on foreign technology. The outage disrupted key sectors globally, but Chinese infrastructure remained largely unaffected. This incident underscores China's push for technological self-reliance amid increasing export restrictions and sanctions from the US. CrowdStrike, which monitors Chinese cyber attacks, saw its shares drop significantly, while competitors gained. South China Morning Post. India has unveiled its first homegrown light tank, Zora War, designed for the challenging Himalayan terrain along its disputed border with China. Named after a 19th-century general, the tank was developed in response to a deadly 2020 border clash with China. With a high horsepower engine and a lightweight body, Zora War is better suited for high-altitude operations than India's heavy T-90 and T-72 tanks. The prototype, developed by DRDO and Lairson and Tubro, will undergo trials and is expected to enter service by 2027. The Indian Army has ordered 59 units, with plans for a fleet of over 350, marking a significant step in India's military capabilities. South China Morning Post. James Paxton, son of the late Hollywood actor Bill Paxton, is stepping into the spotlight with a cameo in the upcoming film Twisters, alongside Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar Jones. This role is a tribute to his father, who starred in the original Twister. Despite growing up in the film industry, James initially aspired to be a broadcast journalist. However, his career took a turn after working on the set of his father's film Nightcrawler. He eventually pursued acting full-time, landing a lead role in the 2016 show Eyewitness. Bill Paxton was initially hesitant about his son's acting ambitions, advising him to explore other passions due to the industry's challenges. Nevertheless, James is determined to honor his father's legacy, even auditioning for his role in Twisters. He continues to connect with his father's memory through his work, including a role in Marvel's Agents of SLD as a younger version of his father's character. Beyond acting, James is also a musician and recently released his first single, Count On Me, which reflects on themes of grief and coping, inspired by his father's passing. South China Morning Post. Lee Greenwood, best known for his patriotic anthem God Bless the USA, performed his iconic song at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, following an assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. 
Greenwood, a staunch Trump supporter, expressed his belief that divine intervention saved Trump. At 81, Greenwood announced his retirement from touring in 2024 to spend more time with his family. Despite his current fame, Greenwood's early life was marked by hardship, with his mother working multiple jobs to support the family after his parents' separation. He pursued music passionately, even working as a blackjack dealer while performing at night. Greenwood found lasting love with his fourth wife, Kimberly Payne, with whom he shares two children. His song God Bless the USA, written to unite Americans, became a national anthem during times of crisis, including the Gulf War and post-9-11. Greenwood's collaboration with Trump extended to the controversial God Bless the USA Bible, which includes patriotic elements and has faced criticism for promoting Christian nationalism. Greenwood's music has been a fixture in American political events, and his net worth reflects his successful career in country music. Australian Broadcasting Corporation. In Darawal National Park, south of Sydney, methane, a potent greenhouse gas, is leaking from an old coal mine that ceased operations over 30 years ago. Thermal imaging captured by the Australian Conservation Foundation, ACF, reveals methane emissions from the North Cliff Mine, part of the South 32 owned Appin Mine. Methane, significantly more harmful than CO2, contributes to nearly 30% of Australia's emissions with coal mines being major culprits. Local residents and environmental groups have called for the site's rehabilitation, pressing both South 32 and the state government to enforce compliance. Despite sealing the shafts in 2005, South 32 acknowledges residual methane emissions and has submitted a rehabilitation plan. The sale of Illawarra metallurgical coal to a consortium means future rehabilitation responsibilities will transfer to the new owners. ACF scientist Piper Rollins highlights the broader issue of underreported methane emissions from decommissioned mines. Satellite and thermal imaging have exposed discrepancies in Australia's reported methane emissions, potentially undermining its climate commitments. The International Energy Agency estimates Australia may be underreporting its methane emissions by at least 64%. The federal government is considering recommendations to improve emission estimates including enhanced satellite monitoring. South 32 has been developing methane capture technology since 2013, but progress has been slow, with the project still in pilot stages. South China Morning Post For over two years, the world has watched the US economy with a mix of wonder and envy as it churned out jobs, boosted consumer spending, and maintained robust growth, even to the point of causing inflation. The Biden administration, basking in this economic glow, would have us believe it's due to superior management. However, the reality is much more sobering. The growth has largely been underpinned by federal government financing of personal consumption and public sector jobs, leading to ballooning fiscal deficits. As this myth of a resilient US economy starts to unravel, the implications for global markets, particularly in Asia, will become starkly evident. The IMF's latest World Economic Outlook hints at a coming storm, noting a sharper-than-expected slowdown in US growth, primarily due to moderating consumption and negative net trade contributions. This slowdown is alarming given that US private consumption accounts for nearly 70% of GDP. The recent job growth, particularly in the public sector, has masked deeper issues of rising debt and fiscal imbalance. The IMF's economic counselor, Pierre-Olivier Gorinches, warns of the risks posed by the US's increasing reliance on short-term funding and its growing debt-to-GDP ratio. As inflation resurfaces and trade tensions escalate, the path to a soft landing for the global economy looks increasingly rocky. Financial markets and the US administration must face these realities sooner rather than later. Yahoo US, Brighton and Hove Albion are on the verge of securing a promising new midfielder from Inter Miami, as they enter advanced talks for 21-year-old Diego Gomez. According to reports from Tom Bogart and the BBC, the deal could be worth up to $18 million, 17 million euros. Gomez, who has made a significant impact with 12 appearances, 3 goals, and 3 assists for Inter Miami this season, is eager to make the move to England. Speaking to Deport Total USA, Gomez expressed his hopes for the transfer, stating, I came here to jump to Europe. If the deal is finalized, 
Gomez will stay with the MLS side until winter before joining the Seagulls. In addition to his club performances, Gomez has earned seven caps for the Paraguay national team and is set to participate in the Olympics later this month. West Ham had also shown interest in the young talent, but Brighton appears to be leading the race to bring him to the Premier League. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.